Hi, today is Friday, June 30th, 2017, and this is a sweet speech. And since it's Friday, it's time for this week's episode of the Swedish History of Ideas. And today, I'm going to talk about Sverker the Elder. Uh, after the fall of King Magnus, a landowner from Östergötland was elected king. His name was Sverker. He is known to us, or he is called Sverker the Elder. And about his background, we know very little. But there is a little. According to the Westrogothic law, his father's name was Konube. The Westrogothic law is from about 1240, and Sverker became king about 1132. The Icelandic Skaldatal says that Sverker's father uh, that Sverker's father's name was Kål. Sverker founded a new dynasty, the House of Sverker. As we will see in later episodes, the House of Sverker competed with another dynasty, the House of Erik, over the Swedish throne for the next century. Uh, and how united was the Sweden that Sverker ruled? It wasn't very united. It seems like Sverker was slowly recognized in different parts of Sweden. Uh, the 12th century Danish historian Saxo Grammaticus wrote the following, and I quote, The Swedes, when they heard that Magnus was busy with war in Denmark, took one of their fellow countrymen, a man of modest ancestry by the name of Sverker, as their king. Not because they appreciated him in particular, but since they wouldn't stand under the rule of a foreigner, end quote. But as I said, uh, the recognition of Sverker took time. Norwegian sources speak uh, of several separate actions taken by the elite of Västergötland, which is in the, in the southwest of Sweden, indicating a high degree of, sep of separatism. The same goes for the provinces around Lake Mälaren. Mälaren is the lake that, uh, well, today it runs out in Stockholm, a city that didn't exist back then, but uh, it's uh, where the center of Sweden is today, or well, the power center at least. Uh, and uh, around, uh, well, the same goes for this area, the provinces around Lake Mälaren, where Magnus, uh, Sverker's predecessor, still had adherents. And uh, Henrik, Bishop of Sigtuna, was expelled from Sweden. Uh, he fell at the side of Magnus in the Battle of Fotevik, which was in Skåne, then in Denmark, now in Sweden, in 1134. By 1135, King Sverker the Elder was acknowledged in, uh, in the Mälaren provinces, and at least by the 1140s, Sverker's authority was generally acknowledged in Sweden, which was then a loosely structured kingdom. Uh, Östergötland, in the southeast of Sweden, uh, was his power basis, and his religious supporting sites were the Church of Kaga, Alvastra Abbey, and Vreta Abbey. All of these are in Östergötland. A lot of Sverker's royal authority was based on his patronage of the church. The Roman Catholic order of the Cistercians were called to Sweden on initiative of his first wife, Queen Ulvhild, and the Cistercians founded a number of abbeys, Alvastra in Östergötland, Varnhem in Västergötland, and Nydala in Småland. All of these are in the south of Sweden. King Sverker the Elder tried to achieve Swedish ecclesiastic autonomy, like church autonomy. Uh, the papal delegate uh, Nicholas Breakspear, an Englishman who would later become Pope Adrian IV, toured Scandinavia in 1152. Breakspear was received by King Kingsverke with great honors, and at a meeting in Linköping in Östergötland, uh, the installation of Peter's Pence, the papal tax, was probably decided. Uh, plans of a Swedish archbishopric were stalled. And when Nicholas Breakspear later on visited Denmark, he promised the Archbishop of Lund in Skåne, then in Denmark, now in Sweden, the primacy over any future Archbishop of Sweden. And this was later confirmed when Breakspear became Pope Adrian IV. However, in 1164, Sweden got an Archbishop. At that time, Sverker's son Charles was King of Sweden. Uh, the relations uh, between Sweden and the Russian principalities uh, had been good for the past century. During Sver Sverker's reign, uh, this changed. According to a Russian chronicle, the newly founded Republic of Novgorod had its first confrontation with Sweden at this time. The confrontation broke a century-long peace 
that had been guaranteed by marriages between the ruling families. Uh, in 1142, the Swedish Knyas, which is Russian for, uh, for ruling prince, and I'm sorry to all Russian speakers because I assume my pronunciation isn't perfect. But anyway, what was called the Swedish Knyas and bishop arrived with 60 boats in the Gulf of Finland, where they made an, ab an abortive attack on a fleet of traders. And that's all we know about this event. It, it could be aimed at, to subdue uh, non-Christian peoples east of the Baltic Sea, but we don't even really know that. In the 1150s, King Sverker received his stepson, the Danish co-ruler King Knut Magnusson, uh, by the way, a son of King Magnus of Sweden, Sver Sverker's predecessor. Sverker's support of him was a threat to Knut's rival, King Svein Grafe of Denmark. Also, Sverker's son and Knut's half-brother half John uh, abducted two noblewomen in Holland, also then in Denmark, now in Sweden. He did this to satisfy his lust. Sverker and the people forced him to return the ladies. John, John was slain by peasantry at a thing, the governing assembly, uh, I mean locally, and uh, Danish King Svein invaded Sweden. Because of Sverker's son being killed by peasants, there was a conflict between Sverker and the peasants. And King, Graf, King Svein, of course, Graf of Denmark, led an expedition into Småland, which was full of forests, and then bordered Denmark. It doesn't border Denmark anymore, but it did back then. And this was done in 1153. Uh, Sverker was uh, passive, but the locals fought off the Danes, and King Svein was forced back to Denmark in 1154. Uh, King Sverker, he was married twice. His first wife was Ulvhild, or her full name was Ulvhild Håkonsdatter. Uh, she was a widow of King Inge the Younger of Sweden, and she had escaped from her second husband, King Niels of Denmark. Uh, and Ulvhild Håkonsdatter, who was Norwegian, died sometime around 1148. And Sverker's second wife was Richessa of Poland, a daughter of Duke Boleslav III of Rymov of Poland and his wife Salomea of Berg. She had previously been married to Sverker's predecessor on the free Swedish throne, King Magnus, and to Volodar of Minsk. Richessa survived Sverker. And King Sverker the Elder, he was murdered on Christmas Day 1156. This murder took place in Sverker's own coach at the Alebeck Bridge near Alvastra Priory, when Sverker was going to the early religious service. And the murderer was King Sverker's trusted servant. That was kind of an abrupt ending for a man who, of who, whose background we know very little, but well, who founded one of the one of the two dynasties that ruled Sweden for the next hundred years. Uh, and uh, that's really all I have to say about Sverker the Elder for now, and this time in Swedish history. And uh, I will of course do a new episode next Friday, where I will talk about. Uh, King, King Eric the Holy or Saint Eric, uh, but that's for next Friday. So this is really all I have to say about this right now. And I would like to thank the people who are supporting this channel through prayers, through Patreon, through PayPal, that's all greatly appreciated. Uh, and there are tiers for patrons and donors, and for information about that, look in the description box below. And if you like this channel, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, if you got something to say, uh, please comment below. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. And uh, please share my videos on social media, on Facebook and Twitter and other social media that allows you to share. And of course, I would also like to encourage you to support this channel. And I will include all the necessary information in the description box below. This is The Sweet Speaks. Have a nice day.